Chapter 1 Crop Production and Management Food is one of the basic necessities of life for all living organisms. Food provides energy for carrying out all body functions, such as digestion, respiration, and excretion. Food is required for growth, development, and body repair. It also protects the body from diseases. Among all the living organisms, only green plants or autostrophs make their own food by photosynthesis. Animals and human beings, heterotrophs, depend on plants and other animals for food. We get our food from plants or animals. Till 10,000 BC, the nomadic people wandered from place to place in search of food and shelter. They ate fruits and raw vegetables or forest plants and hunted animals for food. People learned farming and cultivated wheat, rice and other food crops. They also domesticated animals to meet their food requirements and do heavy physical work. This marked a new era in the history of humans. From food gatherers, they turned into food producers. Agriculture Agriculture is an applied science that deals with the mass production of crop plants and animals useful to human beings. Besides crop production, several other related activities like poultry, fishing and sericulture come within the scope of agriculture. The population of India is increasing very rapidly. To fulfill the food requirement of such a large population, increased production, proper management and distribution of food is necessary. Crop When plants of the same kind are grown and cultivated at one place on a large scale, it is called a crop. For example, crop of wheat means that all the plants grow in the field are of wheat. The product of cultivated plants is called crop produce. India is a very vast country. A rich variety of crops is grown in different parts of the country because the climatic conditions like temperature, humidity and rainfall vary from one region to another. Despite this diversity, two broad cropping patterns can be identified. These are Kharif crops, Ravi crops. Kharif crops. The crops that are sown in the rainy season are called Kharif crops. Kharif crops are sown at the beginning of the monsoon season, that is June or July, and harvested at the end of the monsoon season, that is September or October. Kharif crops depend on monsoon rains for growth. Rice, maize, soya bean, groundnut, cotton, juar, etc. are Kharif crops. The crops that are sown in the winter season are called Rabi crops. Rabi crops are sown at the beginning of winter season, that is October or November, and harvested in March or April. Rabi crops do not depend on monsoon rains for growth. Wheat, potato, gram, pea, mustard, barley, etc. are Rabi crops. Agricultural Practices Agricultural practices are several activities in a particular sequence undertaken by farmers over a period of time to cultivate a good crop. Agricultural practices Preparation of soil Selection and sowing of seeds Plowing Leveling Replenishment of nutrients in the soil Manuring Irrigation Crop protection Harvesting Storage Preparation of soil it is the first step of growing crops. It involves loosening and turning of soil. Preparation of soil involves the following two steps. Plowing, leveling. Plowing. The process of loosening and turning of the soil is called plowing or tilling. This is done by using a plow, which is either drawn by a pair of bulls or driven by a tractor. Loosening of soil is important because of the following reasons. Loose soil particles have more air spaces that help the roots of crops to breathe better. Loose soil particles hold more water for a longer duration. This helps the roots to absorb more water. Loose soil helps roots to penetrate deep through the layers of soil. This helps to fix the plant more firmly. Loose soil mixes with manure and fertilizers more easily. Loosening of soil helps to remove weeds in the field. Loose soil promotes the growth of 
useful soil microbes. These microbes help to add hummus to the soil. While turning the soil during ploughing, nutrient-rich soil is brought up from lower levels of soil, so the plants can use these nutrients. Leveling After ploughing, the ploughed land is leveled and pressed lightly with the help of a wooden plank or iron leveller. A leveller can be driven by animals or by a tractor in the field. Leveling is done for the following reasons. The ploughed field may have big pieces of soil called crumbs which need to be crushed. Leveling prevents soil erosion. The leveled soil is not blown away by the wind or drained by water. Leveling also helps in the uniform distribution of water, moisture and manure. Agricultural implements. The tools needed during agricultural practices are called agricultural implements. The main tools used in preparation of soil are plough, hoe and cultivator. Plough. It is used for tilling and scraping of soil, weeding, manuring, etc. It consists of a strong triangular iron strip called ploughshare. The main part of the plough is a long rod of wood called plough shaft. There is a handle at one end of the shaft. The other end of the plough shaft is attached to a beam which is put on the bull's neck. The ploughshare is curved to turn the soil after cutting. Hoe. It is used for removing weeds and for loosening the soil. Cultivator. The tractor driven plough is called cultivator. The use of cultivator saves both time and labour. Activity 1. To separate good, healthy seeds from damaged ones. Things needed. A beaker, water, mixture of healthy seeds and damaged seeds. Method. We take a beaker and fill half of it with water. We put a handful of wheat seeds in the beaker containing water. Stir the water well and leave the beaker. Wait for some time. Observation. We find that some seeds float on water while others settle at the bottom. Reason. Damaged seeds become hollow and are thus lighter. Therefore, they float on water. Good healthy seeds are heavier and thus they sink at the bottom. Conclusion. The floating seeds are damaged seeds and are not good for sowing. Good Healthy seeds that settle at the bottom are fit for sowing. Selection and sowing of seeds. After soil preparation, the next step is selection and sowing of seeds. This is the most important stage of crop production. Plants grow from seeds. While selecting seeds, following precautions should be taken. Only clean, healthy and disease-free seeds should be selected. Seeds should be treated with fungicides. After the selection of seeds, they need to be sown in the field. Sowing of seeds is the process of placing seeds in the soil. Care must be taken while sowing them. Seeds have to be sown at the right depth, neither too shallow nor too deep, at right intervals, so that they get proper air, sunlight and nutrients. Seeds are sown in the field by any of the methods described below. Broadcasting or manual method, the method in which the seeds are scattered over the field by hand is called broadcasting. This method is not efficient because it cannot ensure proper spacing between the seeds and also does not help to sow them at the right depth by a traditional tool. The traditional tool for sowing seeds is shaped like a funnel having two or three vertical long tubes with sharp ends. The seeds are filled into the funnel, passed down through the pipes with sharp ends. The sharp ends pierce the soil and place the seeds there. By seed drill. A seed drill has a funnel shaped seed bowl connected to several tubes. The drill is attached to a plough. As the plough makes furrows along the field, the seeds in the seed bowl are released through the tubes and get deposited in the soil. Nowadays, a seed drill is used for sowing seeds with the help of a tractor. The advantages of using a seed drill for sowing seeds are as follows. It sows the seeds uniformly at appropriate distances and depths. It ensures that seed gets covered with soil after sowing. This prevents the damage caused by birds. It saves 
time and labor. Transplantation. Seeds of some plants like paddy, tomato, onion, chili and brinjal are first grown in small nurseries. When seedlings grow, they are manually transplanted in the field. The process of transferring the seedlings from nurseries to fields is known as transplantation. This practice has the following advantages. It helps in selecting and planting only healthy seedlings. Spacing can be controlled because of manual plantation. Plants get sufficient sunlight, nutrients and water from the soil. Replenishment of nutrients in the soil. Soil supplies mineral nutrients to the crops. These nutrients are essential for the growth of plants. Due to economic reasons, farmers grow crops in the same field year after year. Continuous growing of crops makes the soil deficient in certain nutrients and the soil loses its fertility. So the soil nutrients should be replenished from time to time. This could be done by following either natural methods or by addition of manure or fertilizers. Natural methods to restore soil fertility. The fertility of soil is restored naturally by adopting the following methods. Fallowing. In this method, land is left uncultivated. Fallow. For one or more seasons, the fallow land regains the nutrients by decomposition of remains of plants and animals by the action of microbes. Crop rotation. Crop rotation is the method of growing different crops alternately on the same field. For example, the farmers grow crops like wheat or barley in the first year. This is followed by growing leguminous plants like pea or soya bean in the next season. This helps in replenishment of soil with nitrogen. You have learnt earlier in class 7 that rhizobium bacteria are present in the root nodules of leguminous plants. These bacteria convert atmospheric nitrogen into simpler nitrogen compounds, nitrates, which can be easily absorbed by plants. Farmers are being encouraged to adopt this practice. Mixed cropping. In this method, two or more crops are grown together in the same field. The crops are selected in such a manner that the nutrient requirement of one crop is fulfilled by the other. Leguminous crops such as pea, soya bean and cereal crops like wheat or rice can be grown together in the same field. Cotton and groundnut leguminous crop are grown together. Manure and fertilizers. The use of manure or fertilizers is called manuring. These substances enhance the fertility of the soil. Manure. Manure is an organic substance rich in nutrients obtained by the decomposition of plant and animal wastes by microbes. Compost. Compost is prepared by the decomposition of farm and domestic organic waste materials like animal excreta, fecal matter of human beings, sewage wastes, weeds, dry leaves, etc. in a compost pit. The process of producing compost is called composting. We may define composting as a biological process in which microbes decompose the organic matter present in organic waste materials to produce manure. Compost is rich in organic nutrients but not in essential nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Green manure. Some crops like sun hemp or sesbania are grown in field before sowing the seeds. They are then ploughed back into the soil. When seedlings are young, these plants decompose in soil and increase soil fertility. They also provide protection against soil erosion and leaching. Fertilizers. Fertilizers are human-made chemical substances which are rich in one or more nutrients like nitrogen, N, phosphorus, P and potassium, K. Fertilizers are produced in factories. Some examples of fertilizers are nitrogenous fertilizers, urea, ammonium sulfate, sodium nitrate, phosphatic fertilizers, superphosphate, ammonium phosphate, potassic fertilizers, potash, potassium sulfate, complex fertilizers, nitrophosphate, urea, ammonium phosphate. Fertilizers are soluble in water and thus are easily absorbed by the plants and increase the crop yield. Fertilizers are usually applied either by spraying, using a sprayer, or through irrigation canals. Advantages of manure. The organic manure is considered better than fertilizers. This is because it enhances the water holding capacity of the soil, makes the soil porous, which makes exchange of gases easy, increases the number of soil friendly microbes, improves 
the texture of the soil adds hummus to the soil, is not expensive and can be easily prepared from the wastes in the farm, does not cause water pollution. Disadvantages of using fertilizers Modern agriculture depends greatly on the chemical fertilizers. Excessive use of fertilizers greatly increases the crop yield, but when fertilizers get washed off through irrigation and rainfall, they reach the water bodies like rivers and lakes. This causes water pollution. The polluted water is unfit for human consumption. It even kills the aquatic animals, such as fishes. Fertilizers are non-biodegradable, thus also cause soil pollution. To maintain the fertility of the soil, excess use of fertilizers should be avoided and use of manure should be promoted. Irrigation Water is one of the most vital substances that supports life of living organisms such as plants, animals and humans. Plants need water for their survival because of the following reasons. Water is important for proper growth and development of flowers, fruits and seeds of plants. Water is absorbed by the plant roots. Along with water, minerals and fertilizers are also absorbed. Water is essential for germination of seeds. Water is essential for carrying out the process of photosynthesis to make food. Water dissolves nutrients which are transported to each part of the plant. Water also protects the crop from both frost and hot air currents. Therefore, supply of water to crops at regular intervals is very important in crop production. Rainfall is one of the main sources of water for crops. Since rainfall, monsoon, is not always dependable, therefore, crop yield fluctuates. When there is timely monsoon, there is a good harvest. If there is a drought, farmers harvest little or no crop. It is therefore essential that farmers should have other ways of supplying water to the crop fields. Watering of crop plants at different intervals through sources other than rain is called irrigation. The time and frequency of irrigation depend on the following three factors. Nature of crop plants, nature of soil of the crop and season when the crop is growing. Let us study the above factors in detail. Crop-based irrigation. Some crop plants require more water while others need less water. For example, rice crop requires standing water and requires continuous water supply, whereas other crops such as wheat, cotton, etc. require less water. Soil-based irrigation. Irrigation also depends on the nature of the soil in which crop is grown. Sandy soil needs more frequent irrigation due to its poor water retaining capacity. Clay soil needs less frequent irrigation due to its good water retaining capacity. Season based irrigation. In summers, the frequency of irrigation has to be increased. It is due to the increased rate of evaporation of water from the soil and the leaves. Sources of irrigation. The sources of irrigation are wells, tube wells, ponds, lakes, rivers, dams, tanks, and canals. Traditional methods of irrigation. The water available in wells, lakes, and canals is lifted up by different methods in different regions for taking it to the crop fields. Cattle or human labor is used in these methods. So these methods are cheaper but less efficient. The various traditional ways are moat, pulley system, chain pump, dekli, rahat, Persian wheel. Modern methods of irrigation. The modern methods used for irrigation are as follows. Drip system, sprinkler system, let us discuss each in detail. Drip system. In this system, holes and pipes allow water to fall drop by drop just at the position of the roots. Water is not wasted at all. This system also saves water loss due to evaporation. It is a boon in regions 
where less water is available. Sprinkler system To ensure that the plants get just the right amount of water, it can be sprayed on them using sprinklers. The perpendicular pipes having rotating nozzles on top are called sprinklers. The sprinklers are joined to the main pipeline at regular intervals. Pumps are fitted in this system for lifting water. Protection from weeds The unwanted plants which grow along with a cultivated main crop in a field are called weeds. Some common weeds found in India include Amaranthus, Chaulai, Convolvulus, Curry, Chenopodium, Batua, Acheranthus, Latgera. Weeds harm crops in the following ways. The growth of weeds in the crop fields is harmful because they consume a great amount of nutrients, water, sunlight and space, which is available for crop plants. The weeds harbour pests, harmful insects that destroy crops. Crop pests spread various crop diseases. Some weeds produce toxic substances that may be poisonous for animals and human beings. Hence, it is very essential for farmers to remove the weeds to protect the crop plants. The best time for the removal of weeds is before they produce flowers and seeds. The process of removing the weeds from the crop field is called weeding. Weeding can be done by the following methods. Mechanical method. Weeds may be pulled out with hand or through ploughing. They can also be removed by using tractor-driven seed drill, hoe and harrow. The weeds that appear during the growth of crop plants are removed manually by using a trowel, kurpi. Chemical method. Weed killing chemicals called weedicides are sprayed on weeds in the field to destroy or kill them. Some common weedicides are 2, 4D, 2, 4, dichlorophenoxy, acetic acid, MCPA, 2, methyl, 4, chloro, 1, phenoxy, acetic acid, butochlor, dalapon, metachlor, and cesiazine. Weedicides do not damage the main crops. Spraying of weedicides may affect the health of farmers, so they should use these weedicides very carefully. They should cover their nose and mouth with a piece of cloth during spraying of weedicides with a sprayer. The grains should be washed thoroughly before consumption because weedicides are poisonous. Biological method Insects or some other organisms that consume and specifically destroy the weed plants are introduced in the crop fields. This is called biological control of weeds. The best Indian example of biological method is weeding of prickly pear cactus, Opuntia, by using the cochineal insects. Protection from pests and diseases. Pests are organisms that attack and damage crops. They may be rodents, rats, insects, locusts, weevils and termites and many more. These pests can be controlled by pesticides. Pesticides kill the pests and their eggs without damaging the crops. These include rodenticides, kill rodents, and insecticides, kill insects. They must be sprayed manually by hand-operated machines or low-flying aircrafts if fields are large. Some common insecticides are BHC, commonly called Camaxine, Malathion, and Decyston. Plants are also damaged by diseases caused by certain pathogens like bacteria, fungi and viruses. These diseases spread from one plant to another through air, soil and insects. Sometimes the spreading of disease becomes so drastic that a huge vegetation completely gets damaged. Some plant diseases are rust and smut of wheat caused by fungi, blight of potato caused by fungus and wilt disease caused by bacterium. To protect the crop plants from pathogens, pesticides, etc. Bactericides against bacteria, fungicides against fungi, larvicide against larva are used. The modern day agricultural practices use huge amount of pesticides, which is very dangerous for humans and other animals. These pesticides usually get mixed with the soil particles, get dissolved in soil water and are absorbed by the plants. When we consume fruits, leaves, seeds, etc. of these plants, the pesticides enter our bodies and cause diseases. Harvesting It usually takes three to four months for a cereal crop to mature. The process of cutting and gathering of crop 
after its maturation is called harvesting. Once the crop matures, it is harvested, cut and gathered. In harvesting, crops are pulled out or cut close to the ground. Harvesting in our country is either done manually by sickle or by a machine called harvester. After the crop is harvested, the grains are separated from the chaff by a process called threshing. This can be done manually by striking the crop against a hard surface or by making farm animals trample the crop. A machine called thresher is also used for threshing. In large farms, a machine called combine is used. A combine machine performs a dual job as a harvester for harvesting and a thresher for threshing. The grains separated by the above method need to be winnowed. Winnowing helps in the separation of the grains from the husk. The grains being heavier fall straight to the ground, while the light husk and hay are blown a little farther away by the wind. Winnowing is also done by a machine called winnowing machine. Storage. Proper storage of food grains is necessary to get regular supply of food products throughout the year. This is because proper storage protects the food grains and other agricultural products from pests, rodents and other microbes. Due to improper storage, more than 10% of crop produce is spoiled in India. The harvested crop grains have more moisture content. So, before storing them, the grains are properly dried in the sun to reduce the moisture content. On a commercial scale, however, Mechanical dryers with hot blowing air are used. This prevents the attack by insects, pests, bacteria and fungi. The dried food grains are then stored in suitable storage containers. On a small scale, farmers store grains in jute bags or metallic bins. On a commercial large scale, food grains are stored in gunny bags in granaries or in silos. The gunny bags filled with the dried food grains are stacked in a large granary. Go down, they are kept about 60 to 70 centimeter away from the walls on the wooden platforms. These platforms are about 10 to 15 centimeter above the ground so that they do not get spoiled due to moisture. Pathways called alleys are provided between the stacks of grain filled bags for periodic inspection, spraying and fumigation. This treatment protects the food grains from pests and microorganisms. The silos are big and tall cylindrical structures. They store different stocks of food items at different levels. Each level has an opening through which grains can be taken out when required. To ensure the availability of food grains throughout the year at every place in the country and to meet the emergency requirements, the government has built a huge reserve stock of food grains. This stock of food grains is called the buffer stock. Buffer stock also maintains the price line of food grains in the open market. Increasing crop yield. The population of our country is increasing very rapidly. To fulfill the food requirements of such a large population, we need to increase the production of food grains. Our country has achieved success in increasing the production of food to some extent because of certain new discoveries and techniques which are introduced in this field. Carrying out the basic agricultural practices systematically can substantially increase the crop yield, providing better irrigation facilities proper use of fertilizers and manure, use of natural methods of replenishing nutrients in soil, using suitable methods of protection from weeds, pests and diseases, and use of advanced agricultural implements may improve the crop yield. Use of better crop varieties can increase the crop yield. Better crop varieties having disease resistance and higher yield can be developed through plant breeding. Plant breeding is a technique through which scientists control the reproduction in plants to get the desired offspring. Hybridization. Hybridization is a technique used for developing new varieties of crops by crossbreeding two different varieties. The new variety hybrid contains the desired characteristics of both the parents. For hybridization, one plant is selected as male and the other one as female. The anthers of female plant are removed at the bud stage to prevent self-pollination. This process is called emasculation. Then the pollens of male plant are dusted on the stigma of emasculated flower. Once the process of pollination is done, the male and female gametes fuse and produce hybrid seeds which contain the characteristics of both the male and female plants. For example, to get a variety having higher yield and disease resistance, scientists select two plants, one having a higher yield and the other having disease resistance. This seed is called stock of new variety green revolution. There has been tremendous increase 
in the production of wheat crop in India during the last 30 years. This is called Green Revolution. It has made our country self-sufficient in food grain production and has improved the economic condition of farmers. Green Revolution is brought about by importing high-yielding varieties of wheat from Mexico. New varieties of wheat with desirable characteristics were developed by cross-breeding methods. Besides giving a high yield, the plants were smaller and stronger and had a better response to fertilizers. Similarly, high-yielding varieties of rice, maize, bajra, sugarcane, etc. were also developed by Indian scientists through cross-breeding. Food from animals The animals need good food, shelter and care for proper growth and food production. The science which deals with breeding, feeding and caring of domestic animals is called animal husbandry.